in this world, it is exceedingly difficult to get onto land, to purchase land, to have a mortgage for land, to buy all of the farming infrastructure that is needed to enter, to turn any sort of profit as a farmer, and to do any of that without generational equity or access to wealth. Overwhelmingly, the folks who are able to do it are white, um, come from generational equity, and the people who are working on farms, who are never able to own their own farms, or really have a say in how climate resiliency or what sort of farming structures are being done are black, brown, BIPOC, immigrant, and queer farmers. Hi, I'm Chris Garner of the St. Paul and Minnesota Foundation, here with another episode of Corner Conversations. On this episode, we're at Sharing Our Roots, a regenerative farm that aims to break systemic barriers by providing BIPOC, queer, and immigrant individuals with equal access to land. Sharing Our Roots is a 163-acre regenerative farming nonprofit that is supporting over 200 local families with land access. A big part of our practice and of our work here is how do we get folks onto land? We have both farmers on site and community gardeners, both here at the farm and across seven community gardens in Northfield and Faribault. Our mission is to heal land, to nourish community, and to prepare emerging farmers. We have around 40 farmers who are growing crops. Our Community Connectors program supports 140 families across seven different gardens in Northfield and Faribault. We're an agricultural nonprofit we have a close partnership with Carleton College, so we regularly have interns and other sort of works and partnerships that we do. Climate change has majorly affected the farmers at Sharing Our Roots. Land access is already a barrier for most folks, and with the constantly changing climate and the variability that we've been experiencing, farmers have really had to act on their feet every single year. We're coming out of four years of really extreme drought, and this year we're experiencing rain every other day and we're seeing a lot of flooding and crop failure that way. We have a lot of great partners supporting us in climate work. There's also a lot of grants going on to support folks in building hoop houses for season extension and protection of crops. My role is to really help facilitate that relationship between farmers to link them to the services they need to be resilient. These things are funded by both foundation support and community donations. And the St. Paul and Minnesota Foundation has made a huge impact at Sharing Our Roots. And Sharing Our Roots provides an extremely affordable, multi-year option for folks to come to, to build relationship with this land, to build relationship with other farmers. We have people farming in community side by side. And that means that we will have a Kenyan farmer who uses traditional trench irrigation right next to a queer flower farmer from Minneapolis who uses landscape fabric and drip tape. And what happens are there's these beautiful intercultural relationships, there is intercultural knowledge that is shared, and it really is a unique place in that people are welcome to be here for the amount of time that they need to be. That means that some folks come for one or two years and then move on, maybe buy their own farm. My dream is to work myself out of a job <laughs> and to support other farmers in that process of starting small, accessing land, and really growing to be able to have their own operation or having a collective operation with their community. The vast majority of our farmers are produce farmers, people who are growing kale, tomatoes, eggplants, other sort of vegetables, but then also quite a few culturally significant crops. And then we do have two livestock groups currently on the farm. One are grass-fed Holstein operation, and then the other is a coalition of 14 families calling themselves the Sudanese Farming Group. They're raising sheep. My dream is that Sharing Your Roots is kind of a hub for emerging and immigrant farmers, a space where they can be long-term and then eventually you know, grow out of and, and buy their own farms and start their own collective operations. And I think that it's also gonna take a lot of allied organizations to do that work. And we're really lucky in the state of Minnesota to have so many organizations working and advocating for beginning farmers and expanding land access and really like righting a lot of the wrongs around land uh, in our state and our country. <laughs>